Good evening, everyone. I hope the screen is visible to everybody. Yeah, Divya. Yes. Yeah. We'll wait for another one minute. If anybody else is to join, let them join. Okay. Shall start with the topic. Once again, good evening, everyone. I welcome you all for our fourth webinar program organized by our team, Diagno School. Myself, Dr. Divya. I hope the first three webinars conducted by our team was really useful, and it is helping you all in your day-to-day -day practices. So, moving on to our today's topic, that is semen analysis. The semen analysis is the crucial laboratory method for evaluating male fertility. The male factor itself accounts for 40 to 45 percent of infertility problems. Various research has shown that it is not the only the total sperm count or concentration which is very important, but also the motility, the morphology and the vitality of sperms are also important. So in today's session, we will be discussing completely about the semen analysis the reporting format, purpose of semen analysis, the procedures, the test, and the vitality assessment, and finally, how the result has to be entered. So, to talk about this topic, I call upon Dr. Rashmi Varma. Currently, she is working as a consultant pathologist at Manipal Hospital, Sarjapur. She has completed her undergraduate MBBS from Gandhi Medical College, Bhopal, in the year 2001, and MD Pathology from Gajra Raja Medical College in the year 2005. He has vast experience in both diagnostic and academic field from past 14 years. He has worked in various hospitals like BMHRC Bhopal, Portal Hospital, and Columbia Health Hospital. He has various publications in both national and at international level. So over to you, Dr. Rashmi Ma. Thank you very much, Divya. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'll just share first my... Uh, 
Uh, are you able to see my uh, screen? Yes, ma'am. But uh, not in the slideshow. Yeah, uh, just check. Are you able to see the slides if I'm changing it? No. You are not able to see my changing slides? Changing no, slides. no, no. Now? Yes, yes. You can see it? Yes, ma'am. So I can put it in, if I'm putting in slides to, uh, maybe that time it's a problem. Is it visible? The changes are visible? Yeah, it is visible. Okay. So, good evening everyone. Um, today I'm going to uh, say about the SIM analysis. The SIM analysis, as, as Divya told, it's very, very common and day-to-day uh, -day basis. Uh, be a laboratory person, we all go through the, the test which we have to perform on the SIM. And um, uh, many a times, uh, it's very, first, of, first of all, it is a very subjective um, examination. Means person to person, the things get changes. So, WHO has uh, given the guidelines, um, little bit complicated, but today I have tried to make it little simple to understand and implement in our day-to-day -day examination. So, few points, yeah, so there are certain points which we always have to remember when we'll uh, do a SIM analysis. And, uh, yeah, for clinicians, when we dispatch the report, it should be understandable to the clinician and useful to the clinicians. So, uh, I'll just start. So, today's topic is analysis in which I'll cover the purpose, procedure, results, how to enter the results. Uh, so, what is the purpose of the SIM analysis? Um, it, is, uh, it is prescribed by the clinician basically to determine the main reproductive problems. Few times they'll uh, do this test to see the successful vasectomy. In that case, we will not, if it is successful, we will not see a single live or dead <coughs> sperm. If it is a reversal of vasectomy, that time we will see if we see a single sperm which is dead or live, it denotes it is a successful reversal of the vasectomy. Now, quickly we we'll just learn about the how a semen form. So spermatozoa production is basically in the testes. Then they'll stay in the epididymis approximately for two weeks. They'll pass through the vas difference and uh, during uh, before reaching to the panis and ejaculation they'll pass through the prostate and before that a bulk of fluid get admixed from the seminal vesicle. Uh, majority of the uh, volume is basically from the fluid which get admixed through the prostate. Some amount of the fluid also get uh, um, added into the um, volume by the bulbourethral glands also. So, uh, when we will do the test. So, why the different different points are there? The points are having the importance related to the organ which are involving from the synthesis till the ejaculation. So, uh, we will, when we will give the report, it will have the interpretation of the function of testes, epididymis, uh, any Sorry to problem. Object. Your slides are not changing. You have to again uh, go back in that uh, earlier mode. Slides are not changing. Slides are not changing. One minute. Yeah. Now, are you able to see that? Yes. Yes, may, I, may I repeat it again because I am only on second slide. No, we can, you can continue but uh, just keep moving the slides. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, are you able to see this diagram? Yes. 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 So basically when we will examine a semen, we will see the function of testes, epididymis, we will see the potency of the vast difference, we will tell about the fluid which are getting uh, added to the semen volume through the seminal vesicles, prostate and the other glands. So, when we will give our report, the clinician will have, they will make some idea on the basis of report, the where is the problem. Okay, majority. 
After that, they have to do certain other tests also, but still, we will give always give an idea about the function of the genitary system. Okay. Now, uh, in the procedure, first thing is the sample collection, which is very, very important. Now, sample collection, uh, its uh, thumb rule, it should be collected in the laboratory. But the many of the laboratories are the small, they will not have the facility to collect the sample. What to do in that cases? So, you always give a pre-labeled container to the patient, give some instructions. So, most important instruction is that when they uh, collect the sample, they have to come to the lab as early as possible because semen get liquefied within, it starts within the 15 minutes, okay. And for us, it's very important to note down the liquefaction time. So, when we'll give the container, we, sh we should say them they have to come back to the lab as early as possible within 15 to 30 minutes. Now, uh, the collection time, uh, there should be an abstinence period between 2 to 7 days. Minimum 2 days, maximum 7 days, but the, the best we will, we should say the patient, it is 3 to 5 days. Then, uh, when we we'll collect the sample, we should always write the patient's name, patient's birth, because we should know the patient's age, then lab ID, period of the abstinence, date and time of the collection, completeness of the sample, difficulty, any difficulty while uh, producing the sample as well as the uh, interval when we uh, collected the sample and when we have started the analysis. Okay, now sample collection should be always in a wide mouth container, clean container as we always use a container for the urine analysis. Same container we can use which can be made by the glass or the plastic but it should not, it should be not toxic to for the spermatozoa. Okay, and the most important thing which we neglect many a time that is the uh, uh, handling of the cement. So, cement is considered as a um, biohazard sample whether you know about the patient, you do know about the patient, patient may carry a HIV, may carry a hepatitis virus or any other uh, virus, herpes simplex virus. So, we should always remember the good laboratory practice while handling the semen. Now come to the macroscopic or the physical examination of the semen. So uh, the first thing we will uh, check the volume. Before that we will see the liquefaction because volume get changed with the liquefaction time. Okay. Now um, as I told it start approximately after 15 minutes then you have to check within 30 minutes whether it is liquefied or not and you have to keep checking till uh, one hour. So, in every 10 minutes, you can check through the pipette whether it is liquefied or not. And what is the meaning of liquefaction? So, basically, semen, when we have we will collect it, it is a semi solid coagulated mass and it get liquefied as a water. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, usually, uh, it, it gets liquefied within the 60 minutes. If it is beyond the 60 minutes, we have to mention in our report. Uh, now, if the liquefaction is delayed, it is not liquefied uh, after 60 minutes, what we can do? We should, uh, there are the two types of the fluid which we can add. One is the uh, dalbacos, phosphate buffer, saline as well as one bromolin. So, both uh, both these solutions you can add, but the thing when you add these solution, you should remember how much volume you have added and you have to do the correction while doing the while giving the semen concentration or, or the numbers when you count. So, best method which uh, usually all the labs use is that the manual pipetting where we'll uh, take the uh, semen in a syringe or a partial pipette is also okay and you pass through um, uh, for six, approximately 6 to 10 times and it gets liquefied. Um, so, liquefaction can be seen by microscopically as well as you just confirm it by microscopic examination. So, you take, you make a wet preparation, see for the mortality of the sperms. If the sperms are still, uh, you think uh, its its mortality is less, then keep for another 5 to 10 minutes at room temperature or incubator and see it again. If there is a change, then you have to take the 
later time which you have uh, noted as a liquefaction time. Uh, then uh, if uh, better, uh, if you can practice like that, that you keep a semen um, container uh, on the horizontally rotated um, plate or in the incubator um, at the 37 degrees Celsius, it's best, you'll get a best homogeneous liquefied sample. And uh, definitely you have to note it down if it is delayed liquefaction. Now, uh, the next thing is the semen viscosity. So, what is semen viscosity? Or how it, uh, when you do the test, if, uh, like um, if viscosity is increased, so your mortality, semen's concentration all get affected. So, that's why this test is important. So, what you will do, it's a very simple test. You take, a, uh, take the semen in a partial pipette and allow it flow gently. And you see the it should fall drop by drop. If the if there is a formation of a thread, that time you should note down the length of the thread. If that thread is more than two centimeter, you should see it is the viscosity is high. So this is also which I am uh, mentioning here as a blue color. These things you have to mention. If the viscosity is high, what clinicians? Understand that he has to go for the further testing for antibody coated sper spermatozoa. Now, uh, next thing is the appearance of the semen. So, usually it is opalescent, homogeneous, grayish in color. Um, if it is reddish in color, it may be because of the admixture of the RBCs. Uh, that shows it is a uh, pathogenic and uh, certain, sometimes it may be yellowish if the patient is having the jaundice or he has taken any vitamin or any other drug. So take a short history always whenever you collect the sample. Okay. Now next is semen volume. So semen volume, uh, as I told you, the semen volume is majority majority is it is contributed by the seminal vesicles prostate gland and some amount of the bulbourethral glands so if the amount is less or more it is having a significant value okay so <clears throat> first of all how to uh, check the volume so better to check in the ml so it should be more than 2 ml so i just uh, say here before um, WHO manual guideline was saying it should be one, the cutoff value was 1.5 ml, but in 6th edition it has been changed as a 2 ml. Okay, if you are going to weigh the uh, semen, you should weigh um, on a weighing machine, and the range is 1.043 to 1.102 gram per ml. Okay, now. Um, what is the what is the factors which uh, which are affecting the low or the high semen volume? So low volume, which says there is there might be obstruction in the vas deferens ejaculated duct means, and there may be uh, some amount of the pa partial retrograde ejaculation or the androgen deficiency. If the high volume is there, it denotes maybe some active inflammation of the accessory glands and some. Time, it may be a contamination with the urine. So if contamination of urine is there, you will get certain more, uh, definitely you will get the change in the pH and certain more things also. So pH, you have to do that pH examination. Can you use a um, litmus paper or you can use a urine um, strips to detect the pH. Uh, so the um, uh, Siemens uh, pH is 7.2. If there is a it is not alkaline, it is acidic, it denotes there is a urine contamination. Now we, we should do the fructose taste test always. Uh, we can uh, take the 0.5 ml, sorry it is a 5 ml, it is not 0.5, 5 ml of cement, 5 ml of indoor, no sorry it is 0.5 and 5 ml of indoor. Just uh, see there is a red precipitate. Hello? Yeah, if it is uh, negative, it means there is a obstruction in the proximal seminal vesicle. Now, microscopic examination. So, you are, did you understood physical examination? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 
So uh, now we'll move on to microscopic examination. So in microscopic examination, uh, we all know we'll see the sperm count. So sperm concentration. Apart from that, what we will see? We'll see any mucus strand formation or uh, we'll see the aggregation, agglutination. I'll tell you what is the um, importance of to tell about the aggregation and agglutination. <clears throat> then we should always look for the other cells, other uh, the cells other than uh, spermatozoa like the epithelial cells, any immature germ cell or the um, pus cells. Then definitely we will check for the mortality as well as the morphology. Okay. So what is aggregation and ag agglutination? So basically if we will see the uh, clusters of the starting from 10 to big cluster of the spermatozoa. So now differentiate between aggregation and agglutination. So first I'll tell you aggregation it means the immotile sperms are adhering to each other or they are adhering to the sperm uh, mucus strands or they are adhering to the debris present into, into the semen. So if they are immotile we will say aggregation, if they are motile we will say agglutination. Okay. So, uh, aggre aggregation, we can just say whether present or not. Agglutination, if you can grade it, it's well and good. So, agglutination can be head to head. Means uh, sperms are adhering to each other in, uh, at the head. Okay. It may be tail to tail. So, they will be adhering to each other along the length of the tail. It may be tip to tip of the tail. So, they are adhering to each other through the tip of the tail. They'll, there will be a combination of all kind of the adherence and uh, they are the tangled to each other. So, now grading will be uh, if they are less than 10 sperms together adhere, we will say 1, grade 1, uh, moderate when there are the um, sperm numbers approximately 10 to 50, large when there is a more more than 50 sperms are together or gross means you will see many uh, agglutination in each field. Okay, understood? Now, uh, presence of agglutination uh, says then there, that there are the some immunological causes of the infertility. So, at this time, if we will uh, we'll see in our report that uh, there, there is a glutination, clinician understand the, the presence of it and then they will go for the anti sperm antibody test. Okay. As well as whenever there are the severe agglutination, we cannot give the correct mortality of the sperm as well as the concentration. Uh, now, the most important thing I feel that is to give the uh, sperm, how to assess the sperm mortality. It's very, very subjective. But if you try uh, slowly, if you, um, if two people are doing together, so if they'll write their own report and tally it for at least 5 to 10 semen analysis, then you conclude where you are falling. In, uh, you have to improve your assessment of the mortality. So, um, before it was rapidly progressive, non uh, sluggish and the non-progressive mortality. Now, WH in 6th edition, they have divided into 3. So, basically, they have splitted the um, non-progressive in a slowly progressive and the non totally non-progressive. So, uh, rapidly progressive, we all know the sperm which are moving, actively moving in a linear or a large circle fashion. But now here the speed comes. So they say if a sperm is moving per in per second half of the length of its tail, it is rapidly progressing, slowly progressing. Slowly progressing means they are again moving in a large uh, circle or a linear direction. But the speed is per second they are moving just a head length of sperm. Non-progressive is a flickery movement or the, the uh, it's not confusing at all. The, the, the sperms are moving but at places. They are not going forward. And immortal means they are dead. So this is the um, mortality. 
so how to look for the how to uh, test for the mortality so what is my experience see whenever you uh, make a wet preparation it should not lie on your table for a long time so whenever you are going to do the examination whenever means the semen is liquefied the first thing you have to check for the mortality because it gets deteriorated with the um, temperature with the um, humidity present in the atmosphere so as soon as you see that the semen is liquefied first thing you should make a smear wet preparation and see it under the microscope when you see it what you should avoid you should not see the corners or the edges of the um, your cover slip so you should come 5 mm from the edge of the cover slip and then examine and you examine in a circle or in a large um, square shape and uh, what you should do you have to rapidly examine it so when you examine in a field if for example you are seeing it so some uh, progressive uh, motile uh, sperms go fast out out of the focus some come in so first you have to count the in that area rapidly progressive spermatozoa then come for the slow then easily you can count the non progressing and the dead sperm so first the rapidly progressing then the slowly progressing then the non progressing and then the dead sperm so you have to avoid the same um, uh, sperm to count again and again to so move it fast as fast you can do if you do little practice you get to know how to do it uh, always assess only intact spermatozoa while seeing the morphology mortality count so it's a thumb rule that always check for the intact spermatozoa okay now we'll uh, we'll uh, here um, uh, the previous uh, reference range for the sperm mortality was cut off was 34 32% so basically we we used to say progressively motile sperm 32% now this is same like a cut off is almost same between the pathological and the um, non pathological so uh, who has made a one more group borderline um uh, where they are saying the sperm mortality between 35 to 45 49% progressive motile are the borderline or more than 50% comes in the category of the normal so if we are using still we, we you are using the the previous reference range is okay because uh, in fifth edition it's like that but in sixth edition they have changed it so i'll advise uh, if you are changing it so please write down the reference where from where you have taken so if you have take if you are writing it at at the end of your report that you have taken a reference from the who sixth edition then please use this uh, this type of the reference range for the mortality and uh, as was per me we will say when the mortality is less now sperm vitality so what is sperm vitality sperm vitality is that uh, while seeing the mortality you are if you are seeing a non progressively non uh, sorry a dead sperm so you should define that dead sperm is actually uh, vital or not vital it is dead or still it is vital okay so uh, your vitality test is a kind of check of your uh, mortality okay so it should never ever be high the sperm uh, vi vitality in that the vitality should be always um, low than the dead sperms if you are saying in your report that the um, dead sperms are 50% if, and if you are saying the vitality is less than that it is a wrong so percentage of the dead a uh, cell should not exceed your immortal spermatozoa okay so again you have to do uh, within the 30 minutes to 1 hour after the liquefaction 
you can use the two method either the hypotonic swell hypotonic solution swelling method or the dye exclusion so principle for the dye is that the damaged plasma membrane such as those found in non vital dead cells allow the entry of the membrane in impermeable stains so the dead cell will take the stain and uh, non dead cells they will not take the stains and in hypo uh, osmotic uh, test what will what is the what is there if you add the solution live cells will swollen up in the hypotonic solution so usually um, prefer the test with the eosin because it will give you a very clear cut demarcation whether you are you can easily count through the counter also okay so take 5 micron of the cement then 5 micron of the eosin just mix it well and keep make a wet preparation um in wet wet preparation preparation what you have to see um the white or the light pink heads are the um, non dead and the, like light ones and the dead dead sperms will take the dark red or the dark uh, red red or the dark pink color so it's very very important to know whether your immortal sperms are dead or alive ones depends on their number clinician will decide their treatment okay now the if the higher percentage it's more than if the dead cells are mm, like cut off is 40% your lives uh, your uh, alive spermatozoa should be 40% if if it is less than that it is necrozoospermia so this is the picture where you will see in uh, d there are the sperms which are and which are alive which have not taken any color okay and other than that all the sperms which has taken the pinkish color uh, are the dead ones now next is the sperm number so you should always count a whole spermatozoa mm. uh, while counting the spermatozoa you should remember we always do the sperm count in uh, uh, newborn chamber okay so uh, you do the dilution as you are doing for the wbc count so it will be uh, 1 is to 4 or 1 is to 2 uh, when you see a wet preparation you will get to know some idea you will have whether this patient's spermatozoa count um, is uh, coming between a towards a lesser count and towards a high, higher count so according to according to that you can change your dilution but remember what is what dilution are doing and according to that only you, you should do the correction okay uh, so what you have to do while counting the um sperm you should count sperm which are lying if if, if it is a three line area you, the head should come between the two inner lines and uh, you should always count in a l shape l shape means the sperm which are uh, fitting towards the left border and the inferior border of the um square okay i will not go in the detail of the counting because you all knows how to count but i i just advise you uh, not to go only with the direct wet preparation counting always do a count in a newborn uh, newborn chamber so you will get a exact number of the count and if you feel in one count Uh, um, it may be not correct then always make one more preparation and do the count and if there is a difference then you can go for the third one also and take a average now sperm numbers so here one again uh, you will see there is a uh, some changes in the difference ranges a uh, difference uh, ranges of the numbers of the spermatozoa according to the 6th edition of the who guideline so before it was 15 um, million per ml now they says it is 20 the cutoff is 20 million for the uh, per ml 
for the normal one. So a normal con concentration should be 20 million. But again, there is a borderline. So border, I'll tell you at the, at the end what is the um, advantage of this borderline category. Okay. So this borderline will be falling between the 10 to 20 million per ml. And then definitely there is a pathological uh, condition when we will see the count is less than 10 million. Okay. Now, uh, you have to say it is sperm concentration when you count it by the dilution method and uh, you count in the newborn chamber and you get a number. Okay. Never ever report it as a total sperm number. Total sperm number is the number which you get while counting it and you should multiply it with the sperm volume. So, sperm concentration multiplied by the volume of the ejaculated semen will give you the total number of the sperms. Okay. So, for this, the difference range is 39 millions per um, ml. Okay. So, if the low concentration... Um, very low concentration you are seeing or you are not seeing in wet preparation any of the spermatozoa, what you will do? You go for the centrifugation method. So you should not immediately say that it is azoospermia. Okay. In, in wet preparation, if you are not seeing any spermatozoa, always go ahead with the centrifugation. What you will do? You just take the 1 ml of cement, centrifuge in 3000 rpm, for the 15 minutes, make a uh, wet preparation uh, with the sediment and examine it. Many a times, with my experience, we will see one or two alive or dead. Um, alive means sometimes motile also will get and dead uh, immotile spermatozoa. So if you are seeing a, a few numbers of the spermatozoa, you can mention it as a cryptozoospermia. Okay, if you are not getting it, then you can say it, yeah, it is azoospermia. And low count is defined as a oligozoospermia. Now, counting of the other cells, uh, the cells other than the spermatozoids, it's important. Um, Sometimes we'll see the immature germ cells. They'll be round in shape. They they just look like the WBC, but you have to look carefully. They, they'll be different in the form of the presence of granules as well as the nucleus. Okay. So, they may be present because of the testic testicular damage. If you are seeing the leukocyte, you have to give the uh, difference ranges is uh, 1 to 2 million per ml. If uh, leukocytes are there, it denotes there is an inflammation of the cesarean gland. So, if a person will go for um, treatment for it, they will be reduced even. Um, the mortality will increase, the count will increase because uh, leukocytes causes the damage of the cells um, with the oxidative damage. They will cause, they will do the oxidative damage to the spermatozoa. Okay. So, if the patient get treatment for the leukocyte, um, for the inflammation, they will be again coming in the no normal category. If you will see the high number of the leukocyte, you should say leukospermia or the palmospermia, which is easy for you, you can choose it. Now, sperm morphology, <clears throat> very interesting to do. Um, what you have to do, very simple thing. You have to make a smear how you make a smear as a blood so you just take a small drop and make a smear okay you make you just dry it for some for some time and then fix it if you immediately fix it um you lose some uh, cells that's why just dry for a minute and then fix it after fixation you can go ahead with the HNE staining or the pap stain Okay, so use any of the stain which is available with you, but always do this. Okay, um, if the concentration of the sperm is less, that time you can make smear after the centrifugation. Okay, so uh, now you have made the smear and you are 
seeing it. So what do you have to see? I'll just show the picture first. So you should see a normal sperm. Normal sperm, what, how it looks? It will have a ovoid shape of, uh, of um, head, which have a little pale area at the tip. It is the acrosome. Then you have a um, neck over here. Then this is the whole tail. So we will, this whole tail is defined as a principal piece, which is having the middle piece. Uh, uh, principal piece as well as the end piece okay so this is a normal sphere you have to look for it okay now there are the certain defects so many a times we just randomly give uh, yeah that much percent of the normal it is not like that just count with as you count do a differential count in the counting chamber for the neutrophil lymphocytes or other cells like that use a counter besides your microscope and just counting for the different type of the you have to categorize into the head neck and tail okay so in head what you will see sometimes it may be a large head small head tapered head or the pyriform or the rounded one or the evacuated one or you will see some amorphous granules in that if you stain it you can around see all these type of the head deformities if then you have to uh, go uh, for the neck uh, abnormalities. So there may be a asymmetrical insertion uh, of the midpiece into the head. Sometimes it is uh, um, sharply bent, angulated. Uh, Sometimes there is a ba ballooning at the neck. So this because of the cytological balloon, cytoplasmic ballooning at the neck. Okay. Then uh, you should look for the tail. So tail may be a short, it may be um, uh, multiple means two tails are there, sometimes it is broken, it may have the angulations, irregular coiling is there. So all these things you have to see carefully and mention in your report. Okay. So now lower limit for the, before also it was 4%. Now also it is 4%. But the thing is, 4%, less than 4% is the pathological. 4% is the cutoff cut between the pathological and the borderline. So normal is more than 14% of presence of normal spermatozoa. Borderline is between 4 to 13% of the normal spermatozoa and below that is the teratozoosperm. Okay. So these are the different morphology for the head abnormality. This is the larger one. This is the small one. This is the this is the um, tapered one. This is the pyriforms. This is the rounded one. Here the asymmetric. This is totally asymmetric. This is uh, vacuoles are present at the acrosome area. Then uh, you may see the double headed. Then uh, you may see the neck deformities like. Uh, bent neck, asymmetrical um, insertion or the thickened neck, thin neck, then you'll see all the tail defects also, coiled one or the angulated one or the short one or the multiple things. So these are and very interesting to see. If you started seeing it, you'll feel it's very interesting. Okay. So now I am just coming uh, towards the end of the presentation. I'll just take three major um, reference ranges separately uh, that is the sperm concentration. So sperm concentration normal is 20 million per ml. Okay. The category borderline it is having the count between 10 to 20 million per ml. We will categorize as a pathological when the count or, or the concentration is less than 10 uh, million per ml. Now sperm mortality. So progressively motile should be more than 50% to say normal. Uh, progressive motile should be fitted between 35 to 49% for the borderline category and less than 35% progressive motile comes as a pathological condition. Sperm morphology more than 14% of uh, are categorized as a normal borderline between 4 to 13% and less than 4% as the pathological condition okay so may i make it big one are you able to see it it's quite uh, small um, size of the letters 
So how to uh, write a report? You should write the patient name, sample date, time, re registration number, age, and uh, the time of the collection and uh, date of your reporting. So these are the format for the patient identity basically. Then you should say about the time of the collection, time of the arrival means if the collection is from outside, period of the abstinence, mode of collection. In physical examination, volume. So reference range is now 2 ml. Color, you have to say about the color, whether it is gray or the reddish in color or whatever is the color. Liquefaction time, you should mention always if it is more than 60 minutes or lesser than that. Viscosity, whether it is low or high. pH, whether it is alkaline or the acidic. Fructose taste test is positive or the negative. Sperm concentration. Okay, so if the, the criteria is more than 20 million, 10 for the normal one, borderline 10 to 20 million, and pathological is in 10 million. Now, now the number, the total number, as I told you, how we will get, we will multiply the sperm concentration with the volume of the ejaculated sperm. Okay. So, for example, it is 2 ml and you are getting 50 million, it will become the 100. So, you are... Are you able to see it? Or I'll just uh, just uh, present like this only. Are you able to see it? No, no, you have to present your screen. We just take this. Yeah, probably. Hmm? Okay, then, um, yeah, so uh, your total number uh, will be, uh, see one um, mistake is there, it should be 10 to the power 6 per ejaculate, okay, it is 39, hmm? then mortality is, uh, you should say rapidly, slowly or the non-progressive motile, so normal is 50, more than 50% progressively motile, borderline fits between 35 to 49% and the pathological ones less than 35%. You should always mention about the total mortality which will, which will be the cumulative of all above three. Um, then uh, sperm morphology, you should say about the morphology percentage. So you should say how much percentage are the normal ones. And if you divide the other categories about the head defects, neck defects, ill defects, please mention those. Okay. Uh, in the, in the, uh, the total should be 100%. Then um, vitality, you should say about the vitality. Vitality uh, will be normal 40%. It should be more than 40%. Okay. Now, aggregation, whether there is aggregation uh, and agglutination. Then, uh, pH of the, it's already done over here. It's repeated one. And the percentage of the numbers of the WBC is the is the less than 1 million per ml is normal. Uh, then, fructose, it's repeated one actually. And then, your impression. Okay, so if it is a low count, you will see oligospermia. If it is a, um, a mortality is, uh, sorry, if uh, the morphology is different, you, you say it, uh, it is a teratospermia. And sorry, and uh, if, the, if they are not there at all, then it is azospermia. So like that. In each section, whatever you are getting the findings, according to that, you should see the impression. Okay. Now, uh, what uh, this, uh, wh why they have made the borderline categories? First of all, the semen examination is not labeling a male as a fertile or the infertile. Okay. But rather to decide the what is the next step we uh, of treatment will be there too. Uh, go ahead. Okay, so uh, the creation of the borderline group is a very much significant value. So a man which is fitting in the therapeutic uh, in the uh, uh, category of the borderline will go for the therapeutic intervention before going for the assistant reproductive technology. Okay, so that's why this 
uh, category is quite important okay and i have taken um, i have made this ppt from the fifth and sixth edition of the who manual examination kindly thank you for your attention thank you ma'am thank you for such an excellent presentation any questions or any doubts Mm. I request all the attendees to send the feedback form. Is any doubt or any question? Actually, what I have seen is that. Uh, most of the places uh, technicians are the one who will be reporting semen analysis and most of the places also they just shoot a video and send for the even a uh, total count and concentration everything it's been done through a video of uh, semen uh, this one so i request all of you to just go through what is the difference between aggregation agglutination sperm count Sperm concentration because all these are very important in uh, reporting because all these are very important for treating the patient. Yeah, absolutely right. So on giving a report, only seeing a bed preparation is not the correct way to give the uh, a whole report because as I told you in the initial um, PPT that when we'll give a report of semen analysis, it's not always says the count. It says about the function of the testes, seminal vesicles, was a difference, uh, um, prostate, uh, everything comes in that, uh, it's a cumulative report of all these organs. So it's very, very important to do it. And if you practice for few reports you will be able to do it very nicely and you feel it's interesting also so go for the vitality check go for the morphology check go for for the fructose test all these are very very important yeah, actually even as in most of the places they don't even do a fructose test even when there is uh, no sperm like azospermia or even an oligosperm like these are very important the importance of fructose tests are not known in many places Mm. So just they see the bed mount preparation, just they see, looking at the video itself, they just do the counting procedures, everything. Mm -hmm. So I feel following the exact procedures is very important and especially we have put up the last uh, reporting format. So that is also very important. So it can be gone according step by step. So I, I request all whoever have attended here to follow the exact procedures as Madam has told. Yeah, so, uh, someone had put one uh, in chat box, they have put something, I believe. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have a doubt. A patient known case of, of chain smoker and alcoholic, what is the precaution, ma'am? Precaution means, uh, see, uh, um, uh, for semen analysis, uh, we have to take the sample. The sample collection should be collected. Mean, Correct. It means it should be in a proper manner. It should, within the time it should should reach the lab and the time of the abstinence. This is the important factor to, um, to uh, say the collection of the proper, that the collection is proper or not. Now, if patient is smoker or the patient is having any other uh, um, habits, it may affect it may not affect so after seeing the preparation only we can this we can conclude our result whether the patient's genital organs are getting affected because of the smoking or because of the alcohol alcohol consumption then only we'll get to know so important is to take a proper sample and do the examination and then can con then we can conclude we cannot say a person you are a, a smoker chain smoker or something else um, there is no any other way to do the different the test in a different way the test examination is the same now besides the abstinence what other history should be taken for the patient so yeah you should know whether the patient is having some spinal cord injury okay so most, many a times if person is having the 
spinal cord injury below the lumbar region where the nerves are supplying to the genital organs the, definitely the genital organs may get affected and the volume is getting uh, affected so you should ask then some paralysis is there uh, like if paralytic attack has was there for the patient or any um, you can ask uh, sir do you have any um, lesion on your external genital area that also affect like if there is only uh, also an ulcer present at the tip of the penis or somewhere in the glands penis you will get the more number of the persons so uh, these things if uh, you can ask it's it give a Mm, a better idea when you do the examination and you report a uh, similar analysis. Thank you, Madam. Welcome. So, if there are no questions, we can end the session. Or uh, there's a quiz after the presentation. There is a quiz on yeah. the same topic. Kindly log out and log re log in again using the same link. So we will meet you again in the quiz, okay? Thank you, one and all. Thank you once again. that if you are logging in through your phone then make sure uh, you switch on to a desktop or you could also switch the window and uh, you have to log in through cargo just a minute. Please log in to cargo. Can you hear me? Log in through cargo and enter the game pin. I will be sharing my screen so before that the cargo screen should be ready. Only ten and. 
entries are allowed unfortunately because this is the free version so kindly grab the opportunity Again, you don't have to download the app, just go to Kahoot online and you would see this game pin, enter the game pin. entries kindly understand the procedure don't download the app just go to the kahoot.it and enter the game pin So we have two Harish here. Harish is the capital in the small town. Another four more entries are left. IT. Don't log in, just enter the game pin. Enter, it says there's no sponsors. Pardon me? Crowd does not have any sponsors for you, it says. No, no, no. Sponsorship is not required. Only you just type uh, the game pin. Sam has come. Just the game pin you have to enter. Game pin. Yeah, yeah. 8203594. Enter the game pin, enter the number 8203594. Okay, sir.
Okay, I think uh, we have waited enough. Shall we start? And all right, we we'll start now. All the best. We are starting now. Only ten seconds. So we got all correct answers. Let's see the scores next. So okay, very narrow race I can see. All are neck to neck. See, this is a matter of uh, seconds, milliseconds. Next. So most of you have got it right. I think the webinar worked today. That's quite good. So Vijay is really leading, followed by Vaishali. Anand at third spot. Quite good. Congrats. Let's see what's happening next. Borderline square morphology as per WHO 6th edition. Let's see what's happening. Oh, Vaishali is leading, followed by the small capital Harish, small Harish, and then the Seema at third spot. Let's see the next. Yeah, the answer is fructose. Fructose makes up a bulk of the semen. Okay, Anand has come back quite good. All right, let's see next what's happening. Yeah, the answer is viscosity. So, viscosity is related to, because we when we see the viscosity, we are looking at the collection time. So, that is very important. So, when you are collecting the semen sample, make sure it's written correctly. Alright, that's related to the viscosity. What's happening here? Oh, Harish. The Harish with the small letters is on the first spot. Followed by Vaishali and Anand at the third spot. Alright, next. So we are now, Harish has a streak with five correct answers in a row. Okay, that's quite good. Seventh question. Wow, so, yes, majority have got it right. But now what is important? Who has got it first? Let's see. So Harish is leading still, followed by Vaishali and Anand. All right. Others can buck up. There are three other questions to go. Okay, let's see what's happening now. Yeah, it's 20 million per ml, not microliter. 
later let's see that's the catch here all right let's see what's happening now right so vijay has come to the third spot all right let's see now what's happening two more questions yeah this is a round head all right now what's happening in the scoreboard almost maintained all right last question all the best third spot we have vijay second spot is vaishali at first position it is arish congratulations anand and seema hs are at fourth and fifth spot so all of you will be winning a surprise prize and the prize is it's a handmade uh, calendar okay of the new year new year is coming around the corner and this calendar is actually crafted by my sister and uh, by art of crafting all right we'll be giving you please share your mail addresses we will post it to your uh, place all right so that we know where to post it it will come to you through your post by delivery by danzo we can do that all right all right so that was the quiz let us just uh, record it congrats to all the winners so this quiz is just one part of it the whole idea the bigger picture is that uh we interact with each other and uh, yeah that is whole idea right so we are a family here we are just looking at it that way so that we more have more interaction more healthy interactions all right and uh, i think uh, the most uh, the feedback is also equally important kindly fill the feedback form if you haven't all right and if you have any doubts you can reach uh, reach to us on our email id as well diagnopool@gmail.com So thank you once again. Any other comments you have, you can do. Uh, Devi is here. Devi, I can just uh, give a vote of thanks and mind up. Thank you, Aviva. Thank you for attending this session and giving your valuable time. Ah, uh, can you fill the feedback form? We will also provide the format. The latest semen analysis format we can upload in the chat window. That can be done. Do you know how to do that, Devia, or shall we mail later? Yes, sir. We'll mail it now, sir, because uh, yeah. here in the chat box, even they cannot download it. Also, yeah, yeah. We can mail it to you, or if you have queries, you can uh, reply to us. We will mail it back. The format of yeah. the temperature. Yeah. I think everybody has some mail ID now, sir. The, yeah, yeah. Whoever wants, also they can just uh, write a request. We can mail it to them. Yeah, and we will send the WhatsApp group also the format. format. Yeah, that is also. Uh, thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.